very lovely morning to all of you. After a lot of rain and rain and rain, last two, three days, the rains have let up. We are even seeing the sun in Bangalore. And we are getting an opportunity to go out for evening walks without downpours. So everything which changes always gives us some joy or some pleasure. When it is hot and arid, we are hoping and wishing for rain. When it's raining continuously, we are wishing and hoping that the rains will stop so that we can move out and we can do things. So like that, it goes on. Life goes on that way. Changes do come in. New technology keeps coming in all the time. New technology is coming in at a faster and faster and faster pace. But today I'm going to talk to you about something which has hit us literally like a tsunami. For a hundred years, we had only landline phones okay. from 1884 when uh, New York was the first city to be connected through the landlines to 1984 and beyond that. In actually somewhere around 1994, we got this thing called pagers. And people were so thrilled, you know, that, uh, oh, you can carry that little pager anywhere with you without any wire, without any connection. And anybody wants to send a message to you, they can send a message and that message will beep instantly on your pager and you will know somebody is wanting to talk to you or somebody is sending some message to you and all that. We were so thrilled with it. Within no time, the mobile phone came. And once the mobile phone came, pagers immediately disappeared. If any one of you by chance has a pager, please keep it. It will have a lot of antique value in the years to come. Okay, then the phone came. When initially the phone came, I remember, it was the whole concept was it was like a cordless phone. We had got cordless phones before that also. So people could pick up a cordless phone and walk around and go somewhere. Only thing was cordless phone in those days had to be close to the main instrument. You go a little distance and the signal would go off. Now it looked as though you have a cordless phone with which you can roam around all over the city. And you will not have to worry about uh, connectivity and all that. You will be able to speak to people from there. But those of you who are old enough will recall that the first mobile phones that came in were expensive. They were huge to carry around and they were very expensive. Not only making calls through mobiles was expensive, receiving calls on the mobile was expensive. You had to pay for receiving a call also per second. So it looked as though, okay, this is a good instrument that has come in. And people who are very, very busy, who are on the move, maybe doctors who are needed in emergencies or some big shots, you know, who have to be contacted. So those are the type of people who will have mobile phones. You and I will be happy. We have a landline phone in office at home and wherever it is. So we can make do with it. That's what we thought. But then somewhere around, I think, 2004, this smartphone came in. And that is when things changed completely. The smartphone, the first thing that the smartphone has done is made all of us unsmart. So whatever smartness we already had, we started losing it. Take one of the simplest examples. Once upon a time when somebody said, you please come over to my place, we would ask them for detailed instructions. Okay, we go on such and such main road. From there, we turn off on the third uh, cross. And there, there is some big uh, restaurant on the corner. You go past that. And then there is another crossroads where there is a branch of two roads. You take the left branch and you will see one tall building. After that, the third house is mine. And you used to literally memorize that and look for those landmarks and you used to reach. That is what we also call a spatial intelligence to be able to recognize space, three dimensions, etc. Now, if somebody invites you, we don't even ask where you stay. We Google it. And Google Auntie starts telling you, go straight. After 500 meters, take a left turn. And that branch, take the slight left. You have 300 meters and you will reach your destination. So you don't even have to make any effort. 
and all the skill that spatial intelligence that I'm talking about, which used to keep getting continuously sharpened because we had to know where we are going, how far it is, what are the landmarks, how to look out for places, how to become familiar with different localities or cities or whatever it is, we started losing that. Now, this is just one simple example I'm giving you to help you to understand how this technology has overtaken us literally, as I said, like a tsunami. It has overtaken us to that extent that whatever we are already capable of, we have slowly started losing out on that. that. There are innumerable such examples, but I need not give it to you. You yourself know what it is all about. As far as I am concerned, I strictly believe in what I had believed much before the uh, you know IT technology came in. Even the regular technology. See, we used to call technology as part of mechanical, electrical, electronics, chemical, aeronautical, so many areas, uh, you know, material sciences, metallurgy. These are all called technology in those good old days. And from those days onwards, I have been a believer that technology can be a very good slave, but a horrible master. And in those days, to some extent, technology was trying to become your master and you had to put in a little bit of resistance to it. But once we moved into the IT era, technology has literally come in like a monster with which you cannot fight. Or rather, you think you cannot fight because you're getting scared, you're getting overwhelmed. You're feeling that without this, I cannot survive. So I can understand the younger generation who, as we keep calling them, no, we call them digital natives. That means they've been born in a digital world, particularly children who were born after 2000. By the time they were growing up, they were already into the smartphone era and the latest of technology and laptops and tablets and whatever uh, it is. So with them, at least to some extent, I understand if they feel that they cannot do without technology. But what surprises me is people who have lived half their life without technology, people who are already 20, 30, 40 years old when this new type of technology came in, <clears throat> why have we become slaves to this new technology and why have we started thinking that we cannot do without uh, uh, it? One of the things which this, uh, you know, uh, barrage of technology has done is it has made us move into the era of instant gratification. Let's start with understanding that. Because of technology, we want everything at the tip of your finger at an instant. 20, 30 years back, it started with things like instant coffee, two-minute noodles, all these things were the beginning of the era of instant gratification. So where a hungry child would come and tell the mother, I'm feeling hungry, mother would say, okay, hold on, I'll cook something for you and I'll give you, you have to give me half an hour for me to make that particular snack or food. From the era, if you remember, the Maggie noodles started advertising. The child comes running and says, Ma, I'm hungry. And the mother says, two minutes. And in two minutes, the child is given whatever that so-called snack. Fine, excellent. I'm very happy. As I told you, technology can be a very good slave. But if children cannot delay gratification, if children feel that the moment I feel hungry, I must get that pizza in 13 minutes. If they start doing that, what is happening? We are allowing technology to become our masters. Because of Swiggies and Dunzos and all these things, whatever I want, it's not just food items. Whatever I want comes to me instantly. Whereas earlier, we had to take, our, not only spend time to get what we wanted, 
we also had to use our intelligence to think. Before all these Swiggies and Danzos came in, supposing I wanted to get something delivered to a friend or a colleague you know, in the other part of the uh, city, what I would have to do is to use my brain to think. Do I know somebody who is going in that direction? Oh, yes, I have a neighbor whose office is there. So can I go and request him that I'll give this little packet to you? Can you take it to your office? Then I will call up my friend and explain to him where this man's office is. It's nearby. Can you go and collect it from there? All that required smartness on our part, using our brain to resolve issues firstly, and secondly, to delay gratification. If my neighbor says, I'm not going to office today, I will go only tomorrow. Then we would call our friend and say that I'll send you this packet tomorrow because my neighbor is not going there. Will you hold on? And that person also used to say, it's OK. I would have liked to have it today, but can't help it since there's no other means. I can't come all the way to pick it up. So I'll wait for one uh, day. The other thing that has happened because of uh, uh, technology is that we are going further and further away from nature. There was this very nice uh, you know, video of uh, a kid who is a uh, you know, uh, typical uh, uh, city kid born and brought up in the uh, city. And the first time the parents take in between tsunami about that COVID and all that had come. So the child grew up purely within the concrete jungle. One fine day, the parents said, oh, let's take our child to a hill station. Let's go to some nice picturesque uh, scenic uh, uh, place and be amidst nature. OK, so they all packed up into the car and they went. When they were climbing that uh, uh, hill, they saw a beautiful spot where they could park go there and stand there and see a very panoramic view, beautiful view of you know trees and valleys and some little rivulet and some village and something and animals and all that. So they stood there and they told the child, see how beautiful it is. You can see the clouds above. You can see the greenery there. You can see the other hills on the other side of it and all. The child kept staring, staring for some time. And said, uh, Daddy, there seems to be something missing. I said, what is uh, uh, missing? He said, there's no background music playing. Whenever the child used to watch some scene of nature, there would always be background music playing on that screen. So now when he is looking at the real stuff, and there is no background music, he feels that there is something incomplete. OK, we can laugh over this uh, joke or something which is you know, very innocent of a child and all. But this should be a warning signal to us how much we are going away from nature. On the one side, there are experts, environmentalists who are warning and cautioning us how the ecology is being disturbed how the balance of nature is being tampered with. The recent floods in so many different places, not only in our country, but in other countries also, how these floods came as a warning to us that you can't play around with nature. Technology is helping us to build taller and taller and fancier buildings. You have high speed lifts, you have whatever you want to call it, power backup, and you have smart homes and internet of things, and everything is there. But when nature let loose its fury, as it happened in Bangalore a few days back, and the richest and the most sophisticated homes got flooded, and people had to run the way refugees or slum dwellers used to do earlier, the super rich also had to leave everything behind and run from their house, not even run, but swim out of the house, go in boats and tractors and whatever it is. After that happened, of course, there's always the blame game, who is responsible, the municipality, the government, the builders, the days that goes on. I'm not worried about that. The question that I came into my mind is that are we thinking about our vulnerability? Are we thinking 
whoever may be responsible for it, but are we contributing towards, you know, playing with nature, trying to play God that I can build the best of my houses and structures and this and that, and I can be the king of my home. But here was a good lesson. And periodically, even when we get these, uh, uh, you know, lessons, do we deal with uh, uh, them? So I come back to the main point uh, of today, that is that if I allow technology to become my master, what happens is I get into addiction. I mentioned this earlier, I'm repeating again, that the same way as you know, experts used to be worried about people who are getting addicted to alcohol, addicted to nicotine, cigarettes, BD, gutka, addicted to psychotropic substances, drugs, you know, weed, ganja, these, that, going up to very, very dangerous uh, uh, drugs. The same day as people were getting addicted and they used to have a lot of problems, their whole quality of life used to deteriorate. Today, there is a lot of um, concern about people getting addicted to technology. Okay. Now, just because there is a possibility of getting addicted to technology, it doesn't mean that I should take sannyas and keep away from technology totally. No. We need to be aware that when I start using more and more and more of uh, technology, what are the possibilities that can happen to me? It's like I like eating ice cream or chocolates or whatever it is. As long as I'm aware that if I eat too much of this uh, thing, what are the possibilities that can happen to me? Am I taking those precautions and then enjoying my deserts? Or am I just thinking that nothing will happen to me and I can go ahead with what I want till one fine day I realize that I have become a diabetic or I'm having heart problems or whatever those things. So taking that into account, what do we need to ensure that who are the people who start using technology so much that one fine day they start getting addicted uh, to it. I have made a small list of the type of people. It's not a very uh, you know, absolutely pakka thing that such people always become addicts. But if you happen to fall into any of these categories or you know somebody who falls into these categories, please be aware of it. So we have made these little slides and these few bullet points. And this will show you the first one that is, you know, you have to deal with the cause because of technology can be become addictive to some of the people. Now, what are the possible, uh, you know, uh, causes? People who get addicted are possibly, possibly, I'm saying, first, lonely. If you are hit with the loneliness bug, if you feel isolated from society, if you feel that nobody loves me, nobody cares for me, I don't have friends, my family people don't understand me, there's a very strong possibility that you might become addicted to technology. Same way people who have low self-esteem, people who feel I'm unworthy. So they start keeping away from other people and hiding behind the screen. People who feel unloved. Same way people who suffer from guilt. I have done some horrible things. I am a guilty person. Therefore, I want to escape into this world of the technology. I cannot connect well with people. I'm a total introvert. I find it very difficult to interact with people or connect with new people. And those who have lost direction in life. These are the type of people, you know, who are, are prone to it. So let us ask ourselves a few fundamental and basic questions. You are your own judge and you are your own uh, you know, evaluator. I'm only going to pose certain questions to you. Like what they say, no, I'm going to be the devil's advocate. Just asking you to introspect. You don't, you are not answerable to anybody except your own conscience. So ask yourself these few uh, questions. Very simple, very fundamental things. Do you have any of these habits? Have a look at uh, this. Do you have the habit of 
checking the, your smartphone first thing in the morning. What is the time gap between your getting up and looking at the phone instead of going and maybe washing your face, going out into the balcony or garden or somewhere and breathing some fresh air. Instead of that, if you gravitate towards your phone first thing in the morning, that is one warning signal. Do you even sleep with your phone next to you? Some people use the excuse of saying that my phone is also my alarm. That's why I need it. it. Alarms don't cost much. You can just buy a simple mechanical alarm, you know, twist the key on that, set the time, and promptly in the morning it will uh, uh, give you the uh, wake-up uh, call. In fact, uh, um, uh, my uh, friend Dr. Andrade actually got the Ig Nobel Prize for designing an alarm clock, which as soon as it starts ringing, if you don't, you know, put it off, it starts running away from you. It's got wheels. So you have to get up and chase it and then put it uh, off. Simple things like uh, uh, that. So why do you need the phone next to you? Do you think some emergency? Will... Yes, if there is some emergency, somebody is not well, you're expecting some important call, then it's okay. Otherwise, can you keep your phone uh, away? And similarly, do you grab the phone the second you hear the sound, either a you know, message or a ringtone or something? Do you leave everything else, including most important, while you are talking to somebody do you, or you are doing some important work, do you give up all that and instantly change, uh, you know, run or, and pick up the uh, phone? Have you had joint pain? Tendinitis, you can ask doctors, they will tell you, is something which is increasing considerably because of the way we are using our uh, fingers on the keyboards and on our uh, smartphones and all that. Do you have, it, have a habit of reaching out, touching, handling, checking your phone, even when you are not using it? So every now and then do you pick up your phone, do you just you know, check out some apps or do you browse through something? Do you check how much is the charge? All these things even when there is no need for the phone. And do you connect more to your phone than to other people and than to your own self? Even one, two, three, four of these are an indicator that somewhere you are headed towards addiction. So let me give you a few very practical, useful tips which are time proven, which you can use to reduce your dependence. Don't wait till you become an addict. Don't say, no, no, right now I'm okay. I'm not an addict. Because like it happens with alcoholics or drug addicts. Slowly you start moving towards it and you don't even realize when you have come into the category of being an uh, addict. So here are a few. Hide some of the icons on your uh, phone. Let them not be visible you know, on your basic screen. So that the temptation of clicking on that gets uh, reduced. Mute notifications. Otherwise, every time your phone gives you that, -dang -tong, you get so distracted that you feel like leaving whatever you are doing and going away. I already mentioned to you, fix a time saying, I will stay away from the phone for such and such time. When I wake up, I have better things to do. I'd rather get freshened up, I'd rather have a good cup of coffee, I'd rather read the newspaper, I'd rather go jogging or walking, or I'd rather do some uh, yoga or pranayama, whatever it is, and then I'll go and check my uh, phone. Same thing with charging. Can you put away your phone in another room for uh, uh, charging? Here, one word of uh, caution is, don't try to cut off completely. Many people recommend this, that take a one day off uh, in the week from your phone or something. I have practically found that many people find it very difficult to do. No, my boss may send a message or I have this important client or my grandmother is not well or something. So don't try to cut off completely for one uh, day. Do it in short spans. Let's say you are going out to the shop to buy something or you are going for your walk or jog. Keep away the phone. Don't take it with you. 
within no time you're going to be coming back you can come back and check if there was anything that you were uh, missed around when you go out of the house start looking around to observe people buildings activities shops the more you take interest in real life things around you the less is the chance that you will be stuck to the uh, you know screens similarly look for non screen games and activities let your home have all possible games and activities which you can immediately pick up if you're lucky enough to have some open space maybe put a screen and uh, start playing badminton or put a volleyball uh, you know that uh, cup over there so that you can start bouncing the ball into it whatever you can even if you don't have outdoor space there's a lot of games which can be done indoor which are non screen board games games which involve people talking to each other and all that and then is a very important thing what company do you keep if your friends are all addicts so many times i have seen five people five friends five family members sitting together all of them staring into their mobiles it is contagious even if you don't want to use or check your phone but if you are in the company of people who are perpetually on the phone you start doing it for some of the social media use your computer instead of your it really helps to do that that's what i do in fact i don't have a uh, smartphone i'm not into any of the apps and all that so any thing to do with internet or facebook or this or that when i sit on on my desktop that too not even laptop i don't have a laptop i have only a desktop so when i know that i have got time now i have not some time and go and sit on the desktop and do this now here is something very interesting you have you heard of this word called pubbing I don't know how it's pronounced. Very often, I am talking to somebody, and suddenly my phone rings, and without even an excuse me or whatever it is, I straight away pick up the phone and start talking, and I am ignoring the person who is in conversation with me. Doesn't he have the priority? What's so great about holding on with the uh, phone call for some time? or telling the person or messaging the person that I, i am busy with somebody i'll call you back then of course periodically remove all the apps which are not uh, uh, absolutely necessary that really helps list out the activities which you like to do but you are not getting time so many people i know keep saying oh i like this i want to do this i want to do that but i'm not getting time to do it you reduce your connect to technology and screens see how you will find the time to do it if possible record the time spent on the phone on a working day on a holiday see how you can minimize it on holidays when it is family time when you go out on vacation or even when you go out for a dinner or some outing or shopping how you can reduce uh, the and fix a happy hour when you are home with your uh, family make sure that you have that thing going there you have this exclusive uh, uh, time no technology no tvs blaring away on the wall no uh, mobiles nothing if you can do that have that happy hour fix up those things you are moving in the direction of ensuring that you are keeping away from uh, uh, getting addicted to technology and then use it as a good slave take advantage of everything that technology and screens have to offer uh, uh, to you and uh, go ahead and uh, you know uh, enjoy these facilities which we have got now which were not available in the earlier years okay so with that as usual i take a quick break and i'll bring it back with you in a minute yes hello everyone so uh, like we are talking about uh, technology addiction uh, there is one such section in our society 
that uh, you know goes to technology addiction peer pressure and exam anxiety and um, you know so many things stress and um, they they just don't know how to manage it sometimes so we at banjara were thinking what is the contribution that we can make for them so we came up with the international program for child and adolescent development now it is an online program you might say why online that is because we want to help everyone pan world we have so many people who talk to us from uh, the middle east or uh, you know even australia or kuwait and they say that you know how do we help our children because you know so much is happening and uh, we just don't so we at banjara believe that it is better to have happy children than broken adults and to help them socially emotionally and to help them cope with everything that they are going through our program our course is designed for that so it equips everyone teachers adults parents trainers coaches anyone who is very passionate about you know uh, emotional well being of uh, children or even their social behavior or uh, their uh, emotional uh, mental health so let's uh, you know do our bit to these children who are our future and uh, who will be there to run the country and uh, we are starting it on october 15 at 4:00 uh, o'clock that will be our inaugural class and um, it also will give you a lot of insight into how to help them communicate with them and also understand them so if you are interested please get in touch with us and we will be very happy to help and over to ali now for more question and answers in the second half of this session thank you yes send back and let me see what are your comments and inputs and let me see if i can answer some of your uh, questions we'll start with rakshanda who says absolutely right the new generation kids are slaves to the gadgets they lack soft skills and patience immediate gratification as you rightly put it but while i agree with you 100% rakshanda i want you to please understand that we as adults should take responsibility for two things one is we are bad role models many children are watching their parents and their elders being stuck to technology and when they realize that they can do it why can't i do it the second thing is consciously or subconsciously we are encouraging the uh, children and this has happened more so after the lockdown and after online education and classes and all that i would again like maybe one of these saturdays to have a meaningful discussion with all of you about this concept of online education the other day i was very surprised when i was speaking to a professor of one of the iits and i told him when are you likely to visit bangalore next he said i'm in bangalore i said you are a teacher and a professor there he said yeah i'm taking online classes now the whole concept the whole idea as an old iit and let me tell you is to be in that campus to be in that environment to be surrounded by people who are technology oriented scientific oriented progressive oriented we used to have these debates and discussions and disagreements and all that and you're sitting at home and attending so what's so great about getting admission into an iit or any such a prestigious educational institution anyway the next uh, is from surekha who says how can we rediscover the world outside our smartphones and tablets while making the most of everything the digital world has to offer already i've given you a few of the uh, tips but more than that if you ask me a very basic fundamental question is become aware of the fact that there is a world outside long back i had mentioned this to you i'm repeating once i had this uh, very wonderful young lady who was a software engineer and had done exceedingly well within few years she had you know climbed up the ladder and was drawing a fancy salary in a very reputed it uh, company and she came and said i want to join your counseling course 
I thought, yes, it's a good thing and add on, you know, you can get more understanding of human behavior and all that. So you can uh, start off come on the weekends and attend the uh, weekend diets and all that. And then I asked her that, you know, what is your uh, goal? What do you want to do? She said, I want to quit IT and get into counseling full time. I was quite surprised. I said, when you're earning so well, you made such a reputation, you are doing exceedingly, you know, financially you're doing so well. Why do you want to give up on that and get into counseling? She gave such a nice touching uh, um, reply. She said, sir, I want to see that there is a world outside the 17 inches of my laptop screen. Isn't that really meaningful? So we have to start with that awareness and that desire that I want to see a wider world. Like I said, go into nature and see how nature is. You'll learn about delayed gratification. See the farmer who plants something and has to wait for months till the crop comes in. That is how we need to work on it, right? Okay, Roshan says, passion for singing. So join the Hindustani classical music. This is helping me to be calm and happy and be away from my smartphone for at least two hours. Also helping me in my all-round well-being. Absolutely right, Roshan. Each one of us can find our own ways. So Roshan says, okay, I'm interested in music. So I went into that. A couple of hours I go and spend with that music class or whatever, wherever uh, it is that I find. See, and at the end of that two hours, you have to ask yourself, did I really lose out on anything by being away from my uh, phone and my laptop for two hours? Most of the time you will realize that, no, you have not missed out. The world has not fallen down just because you were not available uh, to them on your uh, phone, right? Okay. Vinita says, actually, um, though we know the right things and you also keep guiding us with great insights, but knowingly or unknowingly, I feel we too have the strong temptation to check our phones frequently. We tell our kids and younger generation, but we are also, that's exactly what I said, no, Vinita, and all of you, that what sort of role models are we? Why are we doing this and then telling the children not to do? It's like a father who uh, smokes and is a chain smoker and tells his son that smoking is bad. You should not uh, smoke. That is not the way of doing things. You have to be a role model. You have to learn that the world is not going to fall down. That FOMO, as we are told, no fear of missing out. It becomes such an important factor in so many people's uh, lives. I know people who cannot go into the bathroom without carrying that uh, mobile uh, phone. And by chance, they go uh, in and they realize I've gone, they come running out, pick up the mobile and again go back into the uh, bathroom. Now, these are people who are headed towards that uh, the crisis situation, not towards that uh, uh, addiction. Yes. Gayatri's question is very relevant. Is loneliness responsible for mobile addiction? I gave a list of half a dozen factors. I will quickly recall loneliness, low self-esteem, feeling of being unloved, suffering from any form of guilt, not being able to connect with people properly or not having a direction in life. These I have listed out as the six most important parameters or factors which take a person towards addiction. So while others may also be using their phones, but when it is required and when they want to, they can get away. But people who fall into any of these categories the chances of their being stuck with technology, getting addicted to it, are definitely stronger. Then we have Vinita telling us, although uh, uh, getting better when we do counseling and are bust with other uh, activities. Yes, you're right. Vinita. Anything which is human oriented, even animal oriented for that uh, matter oriented towards living beings. That's why I say nature. When you look at, you know, plants and trees and grass and so many things about uh, nature, when you see how many of you have spent some time putting your feet into a natural river with water flowing past uh, uh, you. I did it the first thing after the lockdown was lifted. I went to one place where they had a beautiful river and I spent a lot of time there. You know, putting my feet into the river, walking across and doing those things. I felt so nice about it. It's 
the rejuvenation of your uh, life. Yeah. Yes. Roshan says, not at all in favor of online classes. I have taken a refund at last minute. The class was changed to online. Prefer to interact with people and learn and clear my doubts then and there. Yes, that is what we need to understand. That's why I give you that example, you know, that when you go to learn something, it is not just learning from the textbook or from the lecture that the person gives you. There is so much more, right from the school level, going on to higher education, going on to anything. And that's one of the reasons why we adamantly stuck, even in those two years when the COVID was at its peak, we stuck to our determination that we will not make DCS, our Diploma in Counseling Skills, we will not make it into an online program. We will stick to classroom program and our determination, our perseverance has paid. These two batches, they all felt very comfortable, very nice, very thankful that yes, despite all the restrictions and all that, we could go through this. Of course, we were abiding by the law when there was a lockdown or whatever it is, we were shutting down. But otherwise, we had the courage and more than us, I'm really happy to see that the students had the courage and so many people were scaring them. How can you go out and how can you go and sit in a classroom? They did it and they are getting the rewards of uh, that, right? Okay. Navina says, being able to have physical interaction with nature and with people is refreshing and rejuvenating. No technology can replace it. And this has to be done on a regular basis. I know of people who are caught up in the concrete jungle for 11 and a half months of the year. And once in a year, they make this grand announcement that I'm going to such and such exotic place for a one week, two week vacation with family, they, that, they go and spend uh, so much time and they come back. And then again, 11 and a half months, they are stuck in the concrete jungle. It doesn't work that way. It's like saying that, you know, 15 days or one uh, week or whatever it is, I will do rigorous exercise and then I will not do exercise for 11 months uh, after that. No, If you really want to keep your body fit, what do you do? You do exercise almost on a daily basis. What you can't do during weekdays, you catch up with it on the weekends. Mental exercise is as important as physical exercise. So getting into communion with nature, spending quality time with your loved ones, one is to one, face to face, that plays a very significant uh, role. When you look at each of these uh, um, uh, things, what happens is that every technology, even before this you know, screen technology came in, had a tendency of giving you certain thrills and making you a slave. Take a simple thing like, uh, you know, bikes. In our era, it started off with young boys, particularly, wanting to ride on bikes very rashly, do some wheelies, do this, do that, go zooming around, put three people, sometimes four people on a bike and go around. So we did do adventurous uh, things. But the difference is that we had control. Now technology has no control. There's no monitor, there's no traffic policeman to stop you from whatever you are doing, right? Yes, Navina says also, when we go out with family and friends, we can encourage each other and rather have competition as to how many of us could watch something different in the environment, people, nature. So much we can do. I can list out dozens and dozens of activities which you can do if you get out into uh, nature. And this is based on experiences, mine and of people who are nature lovers and people who understand the importance of leading a balanced life. You may be in a busy job. You may be in a homemaker responsible not only for your spouse and children, but even for your elders or if you have some, you know, uh, patient uh, in your house or whatever it may be. I'm not saying you should neglect that. 
pay attention to whatever it is, whether it's your work or whether it's your home. But understand that you cannot live life without balancing it on the other side. Spending time for yourself, spending time with your loved ones on an exclusive basis, spending time outside the house or the office or whatever. It is extremely important. Ah, Sujitna says, none of these electronic gadgets say for a week how life will be, especially for youngsters. Be ready to keep a few beds in uh, Nim hands ready, Sujitna. Within one week, some of them are really going to go bonkers and you'll have to put them on uh, psychiatric beds. No, I'm joking. Nothing like that will happen. But the fact remains that they will find it extremely difficult. I still cannot get over that horrifying incident that happened last year in a small town near Belgium. There was this boy who was in second PUC and he was just not studying. The board exam was coming close. His father decided that he will cut off his internet connection so that he cannot access his uh, mobile and smartphone and all that. The moment the boy came to know that this is what my father has done, in a fit of rage, he went to the kitchen, pulled out a knife and killed his father. The story doesn't end there. The police came and obviously caught hold of him and locked him up. He told the police, you can lock me up for as long as you want. You can sentence me to life imprisonment, but don't take away my phone. Can you understand the extent of the you know, addiction of that young boy? It's an extreme case, but I still always remember it to show you that in the extreme case, what could possibly happen? Yeah. Surekha says it's not about relinquishing the digital world altogether. Learning to live with technology in a healthy way. How can we strike this? And that's why I told you, forget about a week. I don't think initially you should even aim for a day because... You may not be able to do it successfully or you will feel very miserable if you just lock up your phone for one full day and not uh, look at it. But start with small baby steps. Many which I have mentioned to you. Remove unwanted apps. Don't have the apps on your uh, home screen so that you get tempted to immediately check on that. Maybe mute notifications. Every time a notification comes and the phone does ting tong tong and then you get distracted and you feel like... Uh, looking at uh, uh, it. Keep away the uh, phone for some time. For example, when it is family time or meal time, strictly make sure that not only you keep the phone away, but keep it so far away that you don't even hear the uh, sound. At times when you're sitting and spending time with family, friends, business associates or whatever it is, mute the uh, even the ringing uh, tone so that let the phone ring somewhere later on you can go and check out there was a missed call and you can always get back to the person like that okay yeah renu says i agree technology addiction is bad but audio books ebooks save a lot of time and your talk now on fb is also very useful especially in cities you cannot attend everything live exactly renu that's what i'm trying to tell you that technology can be a wonderful slave I gave you the example of bikes. Bikes were a luxury for young people like us because otherwise we would have been on bicycles. So when we could afford and we were allowed to use a motorcycle or a scooter, it helped us to move around, made us so much more mobile. But that does not mean that you drive rashly, rashly or put four people on the bike or do wheelies or something. That is what is important. Okay. Navina says, also, we can keep a bag and keep all mobiles or gadgets in it while we are traveling so that each one of us strictly follow not to use them for the next two, three hours, except in an emergency call. Yes, that's what I'm saying. See, whenever you're expecting an emergency, whenever you know somebody is not well or somebody is out alone and you're expecting something, it's perfectly okay to have that phone right next to you and uh, you know keep it uh, on ringtone so that the moment it rings, you can immediately pick up and respond to it. But how often does that happen? Very rarely, no. Most of the time, there is no emergency. That is when we should not do, keep away from it. 
Rakshana says it is not just kids. We adults who are also addicted to mobiles. The first thing many do when visiting friends or family to go out to eat out is to look for Wi-Fi connection. Exactly. It's so surprising, you know, that we can't be without that Wi-Fi connection and stuff like that. Yeah. It's not that you are totally disconnected. If somebody wants to make a simple call to you or send you a text message, they can still do it without Wi-Fi connection, right? I don't have a Wi-Fi connection on my uh, phone, but I don't consider myself isolated in any way because I not only get messages, I can talk to people. In fact, the talking part of the phone I got only when the lockdown came. Before that, I didn't even have that. I just had a pager. And for years, I enjoyed life without having to speak on uh, mobile phones, right? Ha. Renu says when you are alone, actually it helps you a lot, but you should know how to use it and when to use it. That's what I said. No, When you are alone, are you feeling lonely? Are you feeling unloved? Is your self-esteem going down that nobody cares for me? See, nobody is there with me. Nobody wants to be with me. When that happens, you are in for trouble. You will reach out to technology to the screens and slowly, slowly, slowly you will start getting addicted uh, to it. See, earlier we used to have movies. Movies were generally maximum two hours, two and a half hours. So if somebody got on to watching a movie on the phone or the laptop or the TV, they were committed for that two hours. Now I am seeing on the OTT platform, there are these sequential things which are happening. So you have episode 1, episode 2, episode 3. Each one is 30-40 minutes, so it looks like, oh, let me watch it. But they are so wonderful. They are so sharp and capable that they make sure that by the time one episode is ending, you are hooked on to seeing the next one. And there are so many where the episodes just go on one after another, one after another, and before you realize it, you have spent 3, 4, 5, 6 Hours watching that one serial, one story, is it worth getting yourself involved so much? Okay. Divya says, before enrolling to DCS, I was introvert. As wherever I go, I was being judged, due to which I was too much to television and phone. But now I am going out for counseling. I feel fulfilled and happy that I am productive, helping people. Being by their side emotionally, yes, Divya, this is a very nice uh, uh, you know, uh, insight that Divya has given us, and I also strongly believe in that. Uh, that when you help other people, no, when you help them to reduce their loneliness or pull up their self-esteem or make them feel loved, automatically your well-being, your mental health goes higher. Uh, up. Yes, Navina says, let's choose what we need to watch using our gadgets. Just like knife in the hand of the thief or knife in the hand of a doctor. Exactly. Why is it that we are not taking a little bit of trouble? Yes, you want some free time. You want to relax and you say, okay, I'll go on to Netflix and I'll watch something. But why do you feel that anything which comes up on that uh, next place trending now and you click on it and before you know it, you are hooked on to it and for the next 2-3 hours you are stuck with it. Why don't you do a little bit of evaluation? Check out, shortlist, maybe ask some friends which are the good movies or good serials that you have uh, seen. And go to it when you feel the need for having some entertainment or relaxation. That's how we can, you know, monitor and limit our uh, Remember that, you know, we are looking for too much of convenience, not only instant gratification time-wise, but we are looking for too much of convenience. Those of you who are old enough will remember that there was a time when everybody had to go to the cinema theater to watch a movie. Cinema theaters were far away from home. You had to get transport. If you had your own vehicle, you had to go inside and look for parking uh, place. If you didn't have your own vehicle, then after the cinema, you have to wait for autos or taxis or rickshaws or something, haggle with them to take you home. You have to stand in the queue and get the tickets. If it was a very popular movie, it would be houseful and you wouldn't get the tickets. Then there were black marketeers who would 
sell you tickets at double the price, and then you had to sit through the uh, movie. Today, everything has become so convenient. So don't get sucked into that. Roshan says, I've gone beyond my capacity to attend DCS classes all the way from Hyderabad. Yes, I talked to Roshan and a few more like her who came from long distances just to do the DCS uh, program. They had no other <clears throat> interest or connection with uh, Bangalore. Roshan says, I met wonderful friends and enjoyed fun learning. More knowledge in one year than my entire school and college education. Roshan and her friends, they would go out to, you know, institution visits or internships. And there would be a very strong bonding. They would discuss not only what's happening in that institution, but what's happening in each other's uh, lives. If you allow me to share a secret, they had found this Patel's Inn close to Banjara Academy where they would go and sit for hours together and chat and gossip and learn so much from each other. That is what true learning is and that's what true involvement uh, uh, is if you are open to uh, be able to doing uh, uh, that. Be people's attention span is coming down drastically because earlier people used to read books and newspapers and articles. Now they are only watching videos. And most of the people are watching videos which are one minute, two minute, three minute. Not more than that. That they are not even watching serious videos. For example, you are all aware that there is this thing called TED, TED Talks and TEDx. They restrict, you know, the speeches to 18 minutes. Many of them are shorter than that also, but the maximum limit is 18 minutes. I keep asking people that there are some very interesting TED Talks. Why don't you explore and see? I find many of them do not have the patience to watch an 18 minute. Uh, video. They would rather go on to Instagram, whatever, I don't even know their names, and quickly watch one, two, three minute uh, videos, right? Navina says also if one knows that one has to use the gadgets for the next five to six hours, one can ensure that before and after that consciously choose to do something without it. Excellent advice, Navina. Even in between, one should take breaks, wash your face, do some stretches, Talk to some human being at a one-to-one face-to-face uh, -face level. These are some of the things which gently but firmly help us to keep that little distance to ensure that while we take advantage of technology, use it wisely, do all that, but we do not allow that technology to become our master. We do not get addicted and then start feeling helpless. I don't know if you had the occasion to see people who have got into alcohol or drug addiction, how helpless they feel at times. They feel miserable. They want to give up, but they cannot because they're getting withdrawal symptoms and they're having so many issues. They don't know what to do when they are not taking the help of that chemical substance. They feel so isolated and helpless. The same thing is happening with technology. Please use it. There's a lot of things which we can do. If anybody is interested, we can give them some nice tips and techniques, depending on whether it's a child or an adult or whoever it is. We are there, as you know, we give free counseling to anybody. This is one area which we have taken up quite seriously wherever possible. If you want professional help, you can go to Nimhans. Dr. Manoj Sharma is doing excellent work, he and his team, of with that shut clinic. Uh, uh, you know, which is uh, called uh, uh, Service for Healthy Use of Technology, which is a clinic in uh, uh, as part of NIMHANS, which uh, offers uh, de addiction for uh, technology. So, all these things uh, are right. Yes, Navina, purposely call my friends and relatives at regular intervals. That's what we should be doing. And coming to the end of the uh, program, I want to actually apologize to you that next Saturday I will not be with you because I'm going on an outstation. Uh, training program and Saturday and uh, Sunday I'll be out. So 24th September, next Saturday, I will not be with you. I will be with you the Saturday after that, which is 1st of October, with a very interesting uh, uh, topic, which a lot of people don't realize, that is time management. So see you in a fortnight. Enjoy yourself. Have a good September. Bye-bye.